Hello, and thanks for tuning in. What I've put together here is a video series that will give you some insight into the differences between basic Autolisp, or vanilla Lisp as it's often referred to, and the Visual Lisp extensions. The syntax of Visual Lisp is noticeably different from basic non-visual Autolisp. It can take a bit of getting used to, even for someone who's quite competent with basic Autolisp. But it's well worth the time and effort to learn how to use Visual Lisp effectively. A common recommendation is to be at an intermediate level in Autolisp before learning the Visual Lisp extensions. But in reality, it's totally possible to learn both in unison. If you're struggling with the non-Visual Lisp, then focus on that, because trying to fix issues in both at the same time can be a bit daunting. We refer to the Visual portion of Autolisp functions as an extension, this is because they were added sometime after the framework for basic non-visual Autolisp was already in place. Perhaps the most important part of the Visual Lisp extensions is the object-oriented programming functionality. Many modern programming languages are object-oriented, and that means that the skills you learn within Visual Lisp can help prepare you for taking on more advanced and more modern programming languages. And of course, it gives you more control over the many objects within AutoCAD itself that you otherwise wouldn't with the non-visual Lisp functions. There's things you can only do in Visual Lisp that you cannot do in non-visual Lisp, and vice versa. Sometimes you can write your code in either, as you'll see later in this video series. Using both in the same code is okay as well, as long as you follow certain protocols. Explaining why you'd use one over the other would take multiple videos. As you develop your own style and preferences, it will be much clearer and you'll naturally know which one to go with when the decision arises. In this video series, I'm using a code I wrote as an example. It works similar to AutoCAD's lengthen command, but this code will lengthen a line from its center. We'll eventually improve the code to a point where it would be suitable for everyday use, but for now, I'm just using it as my demonstration piece to help you get an eye for the differences in syntax between Visual Lisp and non-Visual Lisp. As you'll see, there isn't much difference in the, in the complexity or the skill level required to write either version. And perhaps for this reason, it's a bad example, but without a doubt, it will help you get an eye for Visual Lisp. In the next video, I'll get right into the programming. I'll go through some examples and afterwards, I'll show you how I made my code using both non-visual and visual Lisp functionality.